come from a musical family, drums in the house from day one. My father's a drummer, my uncle's a drummer, and my grandfather played cymbals in the church. So on a genetic level, I think drums are part of my genetic structure. My father wasn't really a hands-on influence. Um, I'm grateful for that because I was able to find my own way in my own time, but he used to have racks of records on the wall. And it wasn't until later on that I realized what a treasure trove that was of information. But I play, I'm not a jazz baby. I grew up playing funk and R&B. I played in garage bands coming in through high school and gospel choir. But in fourth grade, I realized I couldn't read music. I had two cousins that played trumpet. So I picked up the trumpet because they didn't need any drummers. I grew up in an area that seemed to be ripe and fertile with great drummers. In order to stay, in the, stay at the football games and eat all hot dogs, I stayed on the trumpet, you know, and still play the trumpet to this day. Use it as a teaching tool. I believe it's part of what makes me who I am as a drummer. years old was the first life-changing musical experience I had. Witnessing the Count Basie Orchestra with Chris Colombo's son, Sonny Payne, on drums. The most amazing thing I'd ever seen in my life. And at that moment, I pretty much knew what I wanted to do with it my life. I mean, I played a little basketball, I ran a little track, but that was all in between concert seasons. While I was playing in the Rutgers Big Band, Paul Jeffrey, the director of the ensemble, had this amazing visiting artist program. I had the opportunity to play with Johnny Griffin and Curtis Fuller and Sonny Stitt and Woody Shaw and Buster Williams. And I hadn't earned the right to share the bandstand with these guys yet, but I was fortunate enough to have the experience in particular, meeting Philly Joe Jones and gave me my first pair of brushes that I actually cared for. He said, where's your brushes? I was like, I don't have them. He said, you can't go to the job without all the tools, right? So he gave me a pair of brushes. And I presented him what I thought was my transcription of the great drum break from the Miles Davis recording, Halucha. And he looks at it and he hands it back to me and says, where's the sticky? Like, what do you mean the sticking? How am I going to know the sticking? He says, if you know your rudiments, then you'll know the sticking. And the dots are starting to connect now about what's important, about just being the craft of being a thorough drummer. And so now that I'm on the other side of that coin as a, as a professor at Berkeley, um, I'm trying to fold all of these experiences into, you know, a lesson that um, the students that I have now can gain from my experiences. Uh -huh.